Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Across the Ocean. My name's James in Miami. And this is Matthias, straight from Zurich. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Across the Ocean, the underwater videography and photography show for lovers of underwater image making. As always, it is so fantastic to have you with us. Following on from episode 20, where we talked about features that a camera-friendly dive resort should have in terms of a camera room, we're now gonna look at features that a camera-ready or camera-friendly dive boat should have. So in your opinion, Matthias, you've done a ton of boat diving around the world. What makes using a dive camera from a dive boat uh, easy, in your opinion? Well, there is two, two sort of factors to this. There is one, there is the setup and the logistics of the boat itself, uh, which I'm gonna be talking about in a minute, a little more about, and then there is a second factor, which is the crew that is working on the boat, and we'll get to that after we talked about the boat first. Um, it depends hugely on what type of boat that we're talking about when we're looking at uh, dive friendliness or camera friendliness of a boat. Larger boats are obviously going to be much more camera friendly because one of the main things is that you have enough space to safely store your camera somewhere. And obviously larger boats that just have more space and you can keep your camera in a in a space which is gonna keep it nice and safe. But you can do that even on smaller boats with using a few tricks here and there. Maybe having um, a dedicated um, camera bag that you take with you if you're having a larger rig that you're taking on a boat so that it is slightly more protected even having it on the boat. Um, and specifically when you're diving off ribs, semi-inflatables, smaller boats, um, having a camera on there without any protection around it while it's out of the water can be tricky. So that's one of the things that is really important to me. Another thing is having a way of rinsing your camera gear right after the dive. So a rinse tank. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, so that you can keep your camera in there throughout your surface interval because uh, we talked about this before we started rolling. It's not called a storage tank, it's a rinse tank or a rinse bucket. So you should be just rinsing your camera quickly in there and then taking it out and storing it again at the place where you had it before so that also everyone else on the boat that has a camera can use the same rinse tank to quickly rinse off the majority of the salt that has accumulated throughout the dive. And then once you get back to the dive resort, you can do a proper clean of your camera because normally they won't really get dry in between the dives that you're doing on the boat. Uh, particularly not if you're diving in Florida where it's 90 degree or 90 percent uh, uh, humidity. Um, but what would really interest me, James, because I have really not seen um, a very well functioning setup on a rib um, for your camera placement other than having it in a camera bag. But then that bag always gets in the way of everyone and you don't really know where to place it. Am I gonna place it at the front of the boat where it's a little more space, but it moves a lot more, so the risk of the camera being banked against something is higher? Am I gonna place it towards the back where the driver is and the engines, but you never know. Someone might step on it there. I know that you had some really challenging conditions in, uh, um, in South Africa when you were doing the sardine run. So how did, how did the people there organize their camera placement on the boat yeah i mean yeah diving with a big camera rig from a from a rib is is definitely not as easy as it is from a hard shell boat where you've got you know tables and and boxes and stuff that you can store your camera gear on but it down in south africa because it's the sardine run and everyone that goes on it brings a camera because that's what you're there for you're there to film and fo photograph you know epic nature um they've actually been really innovative with the layout of their ribs. So they have large ribs, they take eight divers uh, on each boat. So you have four divers on each side, and then obviously a, a helmsman and, and a, a mate who sits up the front. And then down the center of the rib, they'd actually built a custom table that was kind of like a T-shape if you looked at the cross section where you had bars down the middle, vertical bars, and then a flat table top um, with all these little eyelets running around and tons of bungees that were crisscrossed 
across the top of the table. And there was about a good half inch of foam, of non-slip foam on the top of the surface. And I looked at this thing and I was like, oof, you know, we're doing a river launch through surf. It's gonna be rough seas all day long. You know, they're throwing the boat into full throttle to keep up with the action. Is that gonna be enough to protect my huge camera rig? And turns out it was absolutely perfect. Those guys know exactly what they're doing. And it was a great example of something that had been custom built for the environment it was designed to be used in. This camera table was, was epic. And I know I'm getting excited about a camera table, but these are the things that we talk about on Across the Ocean. Hey. But I just found it to be a very, <laughs> very impressive setup and zero damage happened to my camera, despite the sort of very adventurous expedition nature of that trip. So yeah, I was, I was suitably impressed with that. Um, one of the things that people seem to use here in, in South Florida a lot, which I kind of think is a, a cool tip to share, is a padded cooler bag. So just like you would take to the groceries to bring home your, your cold items, your frozen foods and so on, um, you can buy those in really, really large sizes with a, just a simple zipper on the top that will fit even the largest of camera rigs. And it's a really easy way to provide some padding on dive boats. So that's that's something that's super cool. And they're not expensive either. You can just, you know, buy an off-brand one and, and it'll work perfectly well. And because they're insulated, uh, you can actually use them as your own private rinse tank as well. So you can actually just put a hose in there and fill them up. Yeah, very good idea, yeah. Um, while you were talking, one thing just popped up in my mind that I forgot to mention about boats that I would like to add on here, which is um, shade. Um, I don't like having my camera sitting all day long while I'm out on the boat in direct sunlight. So whenever possible, I try to place it somewhere where it's in the shade. If that's not possible on my camera bag that I take onto the boat, I could just close the lid, which is kind of not exactly the same, but kind of does the same trick. Um, but it's always better if you can to place it somewhere um, in a shady area. Obviously on a uh, on a rib, which doesn't have a hard top or any top cover, it's gonna be difficult. But if you're on a larger boat, try to place it somewhere where it's outside of direct sunshine. Um, I think that's just gonna help um, keep your camera um, running smoothly for much, much longer. Now, what about the human factor, James? Yeah, so I think this, you know, it's it's super important to talk to the crew. You're gonna, you're gonna have two different kinds of boat crew. You're gonna have the ones that are used to handling cameras all the time, and you're gonna have boat crews that are either new or that in certain parts of the world, they just don't see a lot of heavy camera action and, and so forth. So I think it's always a good idea to be very upfront and honest with the captain, with the first mate, with whoever's assisting you and, and use their help, but communicate to them in a very precise and exact way how you want your camera handled. Uh, do you want to get in the water and have your camera handed to you? That's probably the best practice rather than doing a giant stride with the rig in your hands where you could drop it or you could hit it at a funny angle and disrupt one of the seals. So I always like to have the camera handed to me. Well, in that case, how? How should they hand it to you? Are you going to keep the dome cover on? Do you want them to remove it? Um, do you want them to hold it by the handles or do you have a, a lanyard that you want them to grip? How do you want it passed to you in the water? Same thing with getting out after the dive. Talk to them before you get in about how you're going to exit the water. I'm going to pass my camera up to you first. Um, the height of the boat above the water will dictate whether they can reach the lanyard or do you need to hand it up handle first, as was the case for us in Utella last month, because it just wasn't high, you know, it was too high. Certain things like that. What you don't want is you haven't done that piece of communication. You go to handle your, you know, hand your camera up to the boat crew and they grab it by one of the strobe arms or something like that. And the clamp comes loose and the whole thing swings down and hits the side of the boat that is definitely suboptimal. So all those little things can be worked out by telling the crew exactly, look, here's the handle, I'm gonna pass it to you like this, I want you to grab it like this, and then tell them where on the boat exactly you want them to put it. Oh, put it in the camera bucket, rinse it, I'll get out of my gear, and then I'll grab it out of there so you've got space for the next camera and so on. So it's really about communication. Of course, something that communicates incredibly well is money. So don't forget to tip your crew, you tip your crew, they're gonna look after your camera gear and pay you special attention. So I like to, uh, if I've got a big expensive camera rib, tip up front and then guaranteed they're gonna help you look after your, your camera rig. So top tip there. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. Um, and oftentimes um, in my 
experience. Um, if the resort that you're diving with, if they have a camera room that we talked about in, in the last episode, um, if they have a nice, well-organized camera room, the staff will also know how to handle cameras because it obviously means that they are getting enough people with cameras in their resort on, a, on an everyday basis so that people know how to handle it. But still, every camera is different and all of us are different as well. So you do need to, as you said before, James, you do need to communicate exactly how you want them to handle your precious treasure making sure that they don't break anything or there's no unexpected miseries after the divocation. Absolutely, well said my friend. As always Matthias, a pleasure speaking with you ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. Across the Ocean, episode 21 in the bag. Uh, next episode, we're gonna be talking uh, specifically about what makes a good camera dive guide or camera buddy for in-water photographers. So don't want to miss that one. Stay tuned for it. Matthias, I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you so much as always. Can't wait. Take care, everyone. See you soon.